Okay, so we're now going to discuss three different types of feedback for closed loop systems. We're going to discuss position based, rate based, and acceleration based closed loop feedback. Starting initially with position based closed loop feedback. So the output of our closed loop system is given by the variable x in this differential equation, second order differential equation, which represents the new state of the aircraft or the new uh, flight condition of the aircraft given um, the response of the aircraft to the control input, right? So the initial state or the input to the control loop is given by the function y of t. The aircraft has some kind of um, control input applied to it and then the new state is given by the variable x. And there are some other characteristics of the dynamical system um, apparent in this equation, namely the damping ratio zeta, omega n which is the natural frequency, and the gain that we're going to apply to the closed loop feedback um, given by k1. So you can see here that's that's corresponding directly to the output itself. Um, as opposed to a derivative of x, as you will see in a moment, for different types of feedback loops, or second derivative of x in the acceleration case, for example. So here, the gain is applied simply to the output itself. So if we apply the Laplace transform to that ordinary differential equation, we can find the transfer function, you'll recall, is... Um, simply given by the output of the system over the input of the system. So in our case, x um, over y, right, output over input, to get this transfer function here. And so um, the characteristic equation is simply given by the denominator, or when the denominator is equal to zero, right, so we get this equation here. And I've just basically labelled, um, using this terminology here, which we've seen before, the coefficients multiplying the powers of s, our complex variable, right? So the coefficient that multiplies s squared is denoted m, coefficient which multiplies s is denoted b, and this um, constant out here is denoted k. So that allows us to just draw a, a simplified closed loop system schematic, right? We have our input coming in here. Here's the comparator. It's going into this, the transfer function block, which is basically the control. And then we get the output xs over here. The output is fed directly back into flight control computer, for example. Again, k1 is applied to it and then... Um, a, an adjustment is made to the control input and we can keep going around this closed loop. So, using those definitions here which I've just labelled in the characteristic equation, we can find the new natural frequency, the new damping ratio and the new time constant based on the new variables. So, omega n, the natural frequency of uh, the position feedback um, system is given by the square root of km from the characteristic equation. So we get this expression. The uh, damping ratio for the position feedback loop criteria is given by this expression. And um, the time constant is actually going to be the same uh, because these, these uh, square root um, terms cancel out in the numerator and the denominator. So if we consider um, basically an open loop system, so where the gain is essentially zero, um, basically we, we can reduce these equations back down to what we would have had before. So if k1 is zero, then this term goes to one, so we just have omega n um, for the position feedback case is just equal to the normal omega n. And zeta is equal to the normal zeta because this goes to 1 and so on. So um, that just shows that if we apply no gain then we essentially are back left with an open loop system. 
Um, and we can also see, as, as I just mentioned, that the time constant for both open loop system and the position based closed loop feedback is the same. But what happens if we vary the gain? Well, we can either have the gain larger than zero. If, again, if K1 is zero, then we're just left with the open loop uh, system, right? So we, we're left with either a choice of K1 being greater than zero or K1 being less than zero. Well, if K1 is greater than zero, then the closed loop system would have a larger natural frequency um, than uh, the the open loop case, uh, but a lower damping ratio, right? Because the term appears on the on the denominator here, and vice versa if k one is less than zero. So that might be good or bad depending on how we would like our um, control input to be adjusted, whether we would like it to be um, heavily damped but avoiding overshoot, for example. Uh, and that kind of consideration must be made when choosing the value of the uh, gain. Okay, so the next type of closed loop feedback is the rate based method. So for this, we have um, the same differential equation which defines the output of our system, but this time the gain is based on the derivative of the output, which is why it's called rate based. Um, so again, applying the Laplace transform to this ODE, uh, we get the following transfer function, output over input, x over y, um, to get this transfer function. And then, of course, the characteristic equation is just given when the denominator is equal to zero. So we get this. So now, what we have in our simplified schematic is the same as what we had before, the input comes into the comparator, transfer function is given by this. There's an error here, of course, that should say omega n on, on the uh, numerator. Then what comes out here is the output xs, but what we would actually like is the derivative of that. Well, instead of having some very complex um, uh, derivative calculation going on over here. Remember that the um, the Laplace operator can help us out here with this calculation, right? So um, all we need to do is multiply the function x of s by the Laplace operator s to get the derivative because you'll recall that if we take the Laplace transform of a function x of t um, to get um, x of the the complex uh, x as a function of the complex variable s. Well, the Laplace transform of the derivative of that is just the uh, complex variable multiplied by um, x of s plus the initial conditions, and we're just going to assume that those initial conditions are zero. So, um, so what we need to do to get from x of s to x dot of s is just multiply it by the Laplace operator s. And then that gets fed back through this gain um, K2. All of this stuff is calculated by the flight control computer and then it's fed back in to adjust the control input. So that's the reason why this is called a rate-based closed loop system is because the gain which is applied is applied to the derivative of the output. So what does that do to our natural frequency and our damping ratio as well? The natural frequency stays the same. We have a change in damping ratio, however, which is defined by this. So if K2 is greater than zero, then the damping ratio for the rate-based method is greater than it would be for the open loop case. And, um, and Contrary to that, if K2 is less than zero, then of course uh, the damping ratio in the rate based case is less than that in the open loop case. And we can also go ahead and find what the new time constant is. So that's going to give us some different dynamics, right? If we choose to, to use the rate based method, then we're going to get different um, 
effects on the natural frequency and the damping ratio based on uh, compared compared to the position based control control system uh, method um so it depends on what what really our, our goal is um would we like better damping or would we like a faster natural frequency for our modes for example these are the types of considerations that we need to be making when choosing between position based rate based and acceleration based which is the final one of three different types of closed loop feedback this time we have a very similar setup but now of course our gain is based on the second derivative of the output which is why it's called an acceleration based uh, feedback um, system transfer function again find the characteristic equation this is our simplified closed loop system and now instead of taking the output and multiplying it by s to get the first derivative recall that we can just multiply it by s squared to get the second derivative this gets fed back into here gain is calculated and the um, adjustment to the control input is made. So it's worth mentioning here that how this um, how this calculation is made or what sensor we need in order to apply um, apply it to this output. Well in the case of the rate based method we need something to measure or to monitor rates whether that's in in pitch roll or yaw in order to apply it to the to the output in the case of the acceleration based closed loop feedback system we need an accelerometer so of course these are readily available we can have them fitted to our aircraft preferably close to the center of gravity position right so that they're as accurate as possible and then in the in the case of the acceleration based system we send that signal back through the gain k3 and then back to adjust the control input and again we can work out what happens to our natural frequency our damping ratio and our time constant they're given by these expressions so if k3 is greater than zero then um, the natural frequency for the acceleration case is going to be less than it would be for the open loop if k3 is greater than zero we get the opposite behavior and then of course the same behavior for the um, the damping ratio zeta as well so what we're saying here with all of these or these three different types of um, methods or or different types of feedback system is that it really depends on what we're trying to achieve um, with our natural frequency and our damping ratios, time constants and that kind of thing to try and get our modes to be as stable as possible. So of course if we're looking at the short period pitching oscillation for example and aerodynamically our aircraft is a bit deficient and let's say our um, damping ratio is not as large as it should be and our natural frequency is not as short as it should be um, then of course we can go and apply some control law to try to fix that aerodynamic deficiency and depending on what the deficiency is the most appropriate method whether it's position rate or acceleration based method um, we will choose as the most appropriate to fix that problem and then for example if we have a problem with our, our fugoid mode let's say the natural frequency of the fugoid mode is, is too short, right? We'd like it to extend it to be longer so that the pe the pilot has time to recognize what's going on. Then we'd po uh, possibly choose a, a different um, method for our closed loop feedback system. So as I say, it depends really on what we're trying to achieve, um, whether we're trying to increase decrease the natural frequency the damping ratio or the time constant we would choose a different methodology for our closed loop system and of course it is possible to combine several or all of these um, based on 
of course, the, the output directly, the first der derivative and the second derivative of the output with different gains applied to each. They all get fed into separate comparators back into a transfer function and we can achieve some more complex dynamics based on the desired characteristics of the mode that we're trying to fix. So again, all of this comes back to fixing uh, potential aerodynamic deficiencies and trying to get the modes to behave in a way that either means that our aircraft is inherently stable um, or that we can we can uh, get our mode to a, uh, appear intuitive to fix from the pilot's point of view.